Hey everyone, I'm sure that you guys have heard of this. This is Tropical Storm Melissa out in the Caribbean Sea, swirling about, trying to get its act together. As of right now, you can see our convection is actually located a little bit east of where our center of low pressure is, which is right here in this area, meaning that our storm is getting sheared a little bit right now. It's a little bit less organized, but we are expecting this to strengthen eventually as it comes closer and closer to Jamaica, potentially even getting up to a Category 4 strength hurricane as it approaches. We'll be talking about that in just a little bit and also back over into the United States we have a low pressure system that is centered back over here near Texas and New Mexico and Colorado you can see that we do have a frontal boundary draped down to the south eventually this storm is going to be pulling that cooler air and continuing to wrap it around the center of our storm which will also bring up some moisture out of the Gulf of Mexico and once these two things collide we are going to see some increase of thunderstorm activity severe weather and also the potential for a decent couple day stretch here of where tornadoes will be possible and potentially a little bit of an elevated risk all the way down from the center of Texas in through Houston. We got to be keeping an eye on this. We'll be going over that on the latest forecast. But before we get started, I just want to say thank you guys for your patience. I've been sick these past couple of days, almost a whole entire week. I ate some oysters while I was on vacation last week. And when I was sucking the oyster out of the shell, I also got some shell particles into the back of my throat that caused some abrasions back there, which also got infected. It basically, made made it feel like I had strep throat for at least five to six days and the sore throat was absolutely intense going live a couple days ago did not also help but yeah the moral of that story don't suck oysters fork them instead because if you use a fork to eat an oyster definitely eliminates that possibility of there being little shell particles when you try to suck in that oyster out of the shell so I do appreciate your guys's patience and without further ado let's go ahead and get right into it and if you do enjoy this forecast make sure you hit that like and subscribe button but yeah back over here in the Caribbean if we kind of zoom in here you can really see what's happening here with tropical storm Melissa it's been a tropical storm for a couple of days now so hasn't really had any real opportunity to strengthen even though it's over some very warm waters right now essentially what we have going on is not only is there just a little bit of dry air present but also we have some shear some de pretty decent amount of shear that is coming out of the west to the east our lower level center is here but you can see most of our convection is actually back over into this region where we are expecting our mid-level cyclone to kind of be right now our storm isn't really vertically stacked our lower level center is here mid-level center is out over there and you can think of stacking of our tropical system as a hamburger you can think of the lower bun the lettuce maybe the tomato and the bottom patty as the lower level circulation but if the rest of the burger is over here that's not really a delicious burger isn't it but it really is it's just two stacks of veggies and meat but when that mid-level circulation gets aligned over our lower level circulation you have a delicious burger or in this case a not so delicious very dangerous hurricane because once those two things become vertically stacked basically the engine of our storm is fully built and it's going to start churning out that energy and converting it into a very intense storm. And the big thing that we're worried about for this storm is impacts to Jamaica. You can see that just south of Jamaica here, our mean of average of most of our models brings us to the south and then very close to Jamaica. There are still a lot of our models that bring this into Jamaica and also further south of Jamaica. But overall, our models are converging on a solution that could be dangerous even without a major landfall with our storm in considering with flooding, riptides, waves storm surge all of that and then by the time we get into the 27th you can see that hurricane melissa or future hurricane melissa could potentially be a major hurricane category four strength can't even rule out a category five with this storm as there's just so much heat around where the storm is going and also the wind shear could be relatively weak and favorable for our storm to develop into something big and nasty potentially even getting close to one of the stronger storms that we have seen this year but there still is a decent amount of uncertainty in what our storm is going to do you can see for a storm that is only a couple of days out from jamaica we still have a very wide cone of uncertainty but yeah just looking at what the gfs model is saying that our storm will look like in like a couple of hours here you could see that our mid-level circulation if you really zoom in is right here you see this little swirl here this is in the mid levels and you can see that our surface low is actually displaced a little bit off to the east of that so our burger is not fully stacked which is why we're not seeing this thing strengthen significantly in the short term you can also see this is our humidity map as well in the green is that moisture and in the brown is that drier air drier air really isn't favorable for hurricanes and some of that is 
making its way into the eastern portion of our tropical storm melissa right now one of the things that i want to point out here on the gfs is that i really don't think that this model has a very good handle on this storm and the reason why that is is because i think that mid-level circulation is a little bit too far up to the north i think it's a little bit further to the south and to the east of our storm which means that it'll have more of a tendency to get impacted by some of the other environmental conditions that are around the storm and we're going to be going over that uh, in just a little bit and kind of tug it more off to the west and so i do think the gfs is a little bit inaccurate and as i push this forward you can really see that it brings it up to the north immediately i don't think this is like technically impossible but this is in my opinion a very low chance scenario i think our highest chance is that this kind of tracks more off to the west we come over here to the euro model you can see that our mid-level center is more to the east and a little bit further to the south still not completely connected to our storm at all not vertically stacked right so again mid-level centers back over here to the right a little bit further to the south and our lower level center is back over here as well a little bit further to the left of that mid-level center so not stacked dry air moving in on the left side of our storm i think this is a little bit more of an accurate depiction of what our storm is doing right now and as you can see from the euro model it stays a little bit further to the south drifts more to the west rapidly strengthens south of jamaica and eventually as we get into tuesday our storm tries to meander back up to the north and the euro has a direct landfall into jamaica as a very strong hurricane this would bring catastrophic storm surge flooding and wind damage to the jamaica area and it's going to be there for quite a while bringing tons of rain see there's tons of moisture on the northern side so there's going to be squeezing out that rain potential pretty much all over Jamaica the entire time it's there I mean we're talking about from Saturday all the way until about Wednesday maybe even past Wednesday not until probably around Thursday morning or Wednesday very late Wednesday night where that rain is still going to be falling and then eventually subsiding as our storm rips off to the north and east through Cuba as well and then out into the open Atlantic now if we look at our height anomalies here you can see why our storm is stalling right now it's kind of weird to see a storm just kind of especially like a tropical system just kind of sit in one area and not really go anywhere as you can see we are kind of trapped right now in between these two little high pressure systems we got one off here to the east and another one off here to the west and our storm right now is kind of trapped in between them there's not a whole lot tugging it either way the winds around this high pressure system are moving around our high pressure system like this and the winds around this high pressure system are doing the same thing so we got winds coming out of the north to the south on the western side of our storms and winds coming out of the south to the north on this side of the storm so they're kind of balancing counteracting each other and not really steering our storm either way because our storm is kind of getting equally interacted by both of these little high pressure systems but eventually as i push this forward you can see that our eastern high pressure system retreats and so does our western one a little bit but you can see it kind of sticks around there for just a tad and that's going to help nudge our storm especially if it sneaks out into the north again that air is going to be wrapping around it kind of like this but still you can still see that we, that we see that little high pressure system build off back to the east as well so generally our storm is going to be moving very slowly and it's only going to be when our storm starts to migrate closer and starts to get influenced more by this high pressure system that is sitting in the southern gulf of mexico are we going to actually start to see this thing move off to the west south of jamaica and then eventually we're going to have a trough the one that's over there near texas eject out into the southeast move into the atlantic and eventually grab our storm and nudge it off to the north as that ridge over here in the gulf of mexico starts to dissipate so it's still pretty complex forecast right now but some of our models are coming into agreement at least one really being much of a united states storm really at all i don't see anybody in our forecast that should be worried about the storm in the united states but if you are in jamaica vacationing we want to take this storm very seriously this could be an extremely catastrophic event down there in jamaica now in terms of the strength of our storm now that we've gone gone over the background environment the strength of our storm is the next thing i'm going to be focusing on and the kind of the main thing again that's keeping our storm a little bit disorganized organized right now is because we have this flow out of the gulf of mexico kind of streaming you see these little lines pushing into our storm that is that high pressure system bringing that flow aloft into our storm kind of pushing that mid-level center displacing it a little bit off to the east of our surface low but eventually we're going to see that change 
You see that flow gets diverted a little bit further up to the north. Our storm becomes a little bit more vertically stacked and our shear starts to rise further up to the north near Cuba instead of being completely right over our storm. Now, as I continue to push this forward, you can see that our storm, as long as it doesn't interact with Jamaica too much initially, could easily rapidly strengthen as it gets into that little relaxed shear environment. And you see right as it becomes vertically stacked, it really starts to build and then still a little bit of shear around it as it starts to intensify, which might limit the ceiling of our storm's strength potential, but generally overall still looking like a healthy, very dangerous storm. Even a category three directly impacting Jamaica would be a big deal. So folks, definitely be super weather aware. Be preparing for this storm now. Even if it doesn't make landfall, that major flooding could be an issue. Let's go look at some of our hurricanes and look at some of our wind data from our hurricane models. So yeah, here's our HWRF model. It has this thing being a very strong hurricane, but look how far actually to the west of Jamaica that this pushes it. Still bringing some dangerous winds and some flooding potential. I mean, we're talking about wind speeds up to 140, 150 miles per hour with our storm, but it goes just to the west and then slams directly into the Cuba and then eventually into the southern Bahama Islands there. Maybe the biggest impacts would be as this makes a close approach to the southern portion of Jamaica but potentially not making direct landfall. So that's one scenario there. This is the HFAS A model. And as you can see, it actually struggles to get its act together a little bit earlier, but then eventually really strengthens and then goes into Jamaica. So you can see some of our hurricane models are still latching onto that potential of an impact, a direct impact here from Melissa, future hurricane Melissa. And then over on the HFAS B model, you can see it also does kind of a similar thing. Meanders takes a little while to get together, but once it becomes vertically stacked, it immediately rapidly strengthens into a category four close to a category five and it also makes land impact so we have a lot of models here indicating land impacts to jamaica especially those direct very dangerous land impacts so definitely keep a close eye on this jamaica get your plans in place right now and if need be if this is really going to make major landfall we'll be live covering this event with the storm chaser on the ground in jamaica now coming back over to the united states we are going to have a couple of days of some unsettled weather and severe weather here into texas the severe weather threat overall is generally low, but there could be some hail, some damaging winds, and also some sporadic tornadic activity. You can see we have a yellow area that's a two out of five over here for Lubbock, Odessa, Austin, San Antonio for today. That includes a 5% tornado risk over there near San Antonio in Austin. And then going into day two, you can see that we also have a marginal and a slight risk from parts of Texas going into Louisiana, even into parts of Mississippi. And you can see that we have another 5% for tornadoes again as we move into tomorrow as well. That's going to be for parts of Houston, Baton Rouge, and just to the west of New Orleans. So a couple of days here where tornadoes and severe weather are going to be possible. So let's kind of go over the environment and the potential here for those tornadoes. This is the HRRR 6Z run. You can see generally in the morning, we're going to see some light showers out there just to the east of Odessa. And eventually as we get into around 2 or 3 p.m., we could see some thunderstorm activity really start to pick up. So maybe some small chances for some supercells here, but generally we should upscale pretty quickly into a line of storms. The tornado threat today doesn't really seem overly elevated. There is going to be some some shear out there, but not a whole lot on that leading edge. Maybe a couple of instances of some QLCS tornadoes could be possible as we go into around like 5 or 6 p.m. today. And we could see thunderstorm activity really all the way from the border of Mexico all the way up into Oklahoma. So definitely a storm to keep an eye on, but it looks kind of disorganized for today. Could see maybe a couple of supercells pop out there, especially near the border of Mexico and Texas, but generally looks like mainly just a line segment with some cable capabilities here with some embedded tornadoes as this pushes down to the south and east and you can see eventually as we get into around 1 a.m our storm is approaching austin san antonio potentially with a pretty strong line of storms and again got to watch out for those little brief spin up tornadoes and then as we go into the overnight hours could even see an increase here of some damaging wind hail and maybe a small tornado threat going into 6 a.m but check this out as i push this through you see this little wave comes through our atmosphere recharges again and we actually get potentially maybe even a strong Stronger tornado threat start to pop up as we go into the late night hours on the 25th around 10 p.m around Houston, Galveston, Beaumont, starting to see an interesting uh, scenario pop up here on our models. You can see that we have around 30 knots of shear down there, which is going to be enough to support some tornadoes. A lot of instability there. 
And given that this is a small, compact system like this, probably gonna have a decent amount of storm relative helicity, and we do. And if you add all of that together, we actually end up getting something called the significant tornado parameter. And you can see it's a little bit elevated out there. So definitely a chance of tornadoes, potentially our highest chance for tornadoes. It's gonna be on the nighttime of the 25th, somewhere in between 7 p.m. and 1 a.m., right around the Houston, Galveston, Victoria areas here of Texas. Maybe a small tornado risk also over here into Louisiana as we go into the late night hours as well now in terms of temperatures out there for the next couple of days it's going to be warming back up into the south and the southeast a little bit still relatively cool in comparison to what we've been dealing with during the summer kind of the biggest heat story is that we're going to be seeing 70 degree temperatures in october in southern canada that's pretty crazy Talk about 30s and 40s all the way up from the great lakes going into the northeast tomorrow afternoon and a little bit cooler up here as we have a pacific moisture stream start to move into the west coast as as well. As I continue to push this forward into the 26th, you can see that it's definitely going to stay generally cooler. Look at this, potentially into the 40s and 50s during the afternoon hours in the 26th, which really doesn't make sense into my mind here into parts of the Ozarks going into the southeast, 80s and 90s over there into Texas, and still pretty cold, potentially even some freezing temperatures as we go overnight into the 27th early morning up there into New York, also back over here into the Pacific Northwest and some of the higher elevations could see those temperatures get below freezing as well and then as we continue to go through the overnight into the next day generally staying cooler as that trough moves into the eastern portion of the united states 50s and 60s 40s across the board at peak heating hours by the way on the 28th so looking pretty cool and fall like out there for a lot of folks in the eastern united states we're still staying pretty warm down here into the southern united states near the coast and then also into the desert areas as well